Thank you for joining us in this video. Uh, the intent of this video is for revision purposes for our students, our apprentices that are doing their Level 3 Digital Marketer Apprenticeship here with us at Brooks & Kirk. I um, decided to publish this uh, to help anybody else um, that, that is studying this and needs a bit of assistance with the content. So please do feel free to say hi, like, comment and share, um, kind of malarkey that people do on YouTube. And uh, if at all you need some general advice and guidance or you're interested in me or our company, then head over to brooksandkirk.co.uk and you can have a look at the sorts of courses that we have to offer or just give us a call if you want some general advice and guidance. So without further ado, um, uh, this is a tutorial between me and one of our apprentices uh, and we decided to record it. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. Right, okay, in the um, Digital Marketing Apprenticeship um, Unit, mm -hmm. there is uh, this outcome here, understand the components of what makes the web work. So we're right. focusing on this section particularly, because before you can do coding, as I'm sure you'd expect, it's, it's really important to have a good understanding of where it sits within the entire ecosystem of uh, networking hardware and all that sort and, and the actual software behind what it works because a, a web marketer or any sort of it based or technical based um, qualification we spend a large amount of time troubleshooting <laughs> and working out why <laughs> something doesn't work yeah that's and true having an understanding of, of what goes on in the background is essential absolutely key so yeah, that's pretty much what I've mentioned. We're going to look at some um, specific terminology because, uh, mm -hmm. because you, you know as well as I do, IT loves uh, acronyms and stuff yeah. like that. You need to have a good awareness of of the concepts, and and you will be examined on on these things as well. Um, yeah, and and specific processes, software processes that makes the internet work. Okay. So. Recognize any of these pieces of software? Yeah, Microsoft, WordPress. They're the only two out of the lot. Really? Yeah, I don't recognize CentOS. I don't recognize VMware, but that looks like cloud software. Okay. My admin, PHP, Note, and XAMP. Um, although it's, your head is covering it slightly, so I can't see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that works. XAMP. Yeah. Right, well, VMware is an operating system that's called a hypervisor. So this allows you to virtualize other operating systems inside of itself. So um, really useful if you've got one server that's really powerful, you can actually install VMware and then have 10 different Windows virtual machines in the background or responsible for a certain thing. Okay. Cent CentOS is an operating system, actually. Oh, is it? Isn't it less? Yeah, this is probably the most utilized operating system. Full stop. Really? <laughs> yeah, this is the the back the backbone for most web applications. Um, okay. Yeah, it's a Linux based uh, system. Really, Linux? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Now, PHP My Admin is a it's a web based tool that allows you to access. Um, it allows you to interface with a web database system. And have you ever heard of a, a database web database system? Uh, SQL, ring a bell, MariaDB? No. No? no, no, no. Okay. XAMP is a piece of software that allows you to have a web server locally because WordPress only installs on a web server. You don't just double click an exe and install a program with wordpress you actually have to implement it on a web server and it needs okay. a web server it needs database systems it needs file storage and xamp allows it to all be emulated with locally so you can access it so that's something you'll be using at some point i expect so in summary what is software well it's a package bundle of code which when run allows you to perform a service or feature and it, it controls the hardware to some degree okay what about these hardware HP, manufacturers dell intel super micro don't recognize super micro msi yeah 
Okay. Supermicro is as big as HP and Dell in the enterprise server world. So most of your, I think Google runs on mostly Supermicro machines, or the the ones that they decommissioned recently do anyway. Okay. Um, so yeah, hardware, it's the physical bits, the nuts and bolts, the actual physical components that when put together do a f some sort of computing feature. What about a network? A network? Yeah, what's a network? Um, it's pretty much just running data to a server, and it goes to different ports, so you send it out to different PCs. They all can tap into the same server, and vice versa, right? Kind of. It's a way of connecting and allowing different devices to communicate on the same language. So there's millions of different reasons why you might want to do that for various different mm -hmm. services from CCTV cameras, phones, yeah. um, physical web servers, file servers, uh, game servers even. Mm -hmm. So it physically allows us to communicate with uh, or one machine or one device to be able to communicate with another. The, have you ever come across the phrase IoT? No. Okay, Internet of Things. Oh yeah, I have. What do you, what does that mean to you? It doesn't mean doesn't mean a little thing. I just I just heard it in passing. Okay, IoT devices are what's deemed smart devices that can like communicate in on services. So like light bulbs, doorbells. You know, it's, it's some sort of centrally controlled system, um, and it all requires a network to get that smart functionality. So, operating systems, what do they yeah. do? Um, operating systems, what do they do? They allow you to install software, run your PC. Like, it just allows you to do everything you do on the PC. That's as kind far of. as I'm aware. Yeah, so we've got Windows there, the one that most people are familiar with. But your time, yeah. Uh, Ubuntu, uh, most um, web type operating systems are tend to be run from the command line only lots of the time you, have you are you familiar with what the command line is uh no i have the command prompt but that that's but... that that's that yeah okay. essentially so all of you you don't have a gui per se that's another acronym what's a gui no clue graphical user interface so Windows provides us with a graphical user interface with a start menu, oh, folders, and stuff like that. Ubuntu does if you install the GUI version of it. Um, CentOS doesn't uh, normally. You can, but uh, FreeBSD is uh, another Linux-based um, fork, um, and it tends to be the system that underpins lots of other systems. Right. Drivers. What's a driver? This is another type of software. Yeah, I've I've run as drivers. I don't know exactly what a driver is. I just know that it, it drives the software, but that's about it. Almost. Like, it drives the hardware, actually. It's, it's hardware. Yeah. It tells the operating system what, it, what the hell it's got connected and mm -hmm. how to use it. So if you plug in a webcam, the driver will say, oh, hi, you're a webcam. I know now how to use you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if it didn't have any sort of driver software, it would just be something that's physically plugged in, but the operating system wouldn't know how to communicate with it or use it. So this is another type of software. Oh. Now, if you're going to ask me what utilities is, I have no clue. Have you ever seen... Well, I've talked about PHP MyAdmin. What about Handbrake? No. Well, um... It's a piece of open source um, software that allows you to convert one video file or audio file to a different one. Pretty pretty cool, pretty powerful. You do need to understand about audio files and things like that as part of your apprenticeship and video files. Mm -hmm. yep. What about Putty? <laughs> You're really driving me through the ringer here. <laughs> Absolutely. Putty is, again, it's another free piece of software, but it allows a Windows computer to communicate via the command line to a Linux computer or a Linux service. And it tends to be done through the secure shell, SSH, 
the secure shell is, is a Linux version of command line. Services. Right. Any idea? Okay. No, never heard of uh, Apache. I have heard of that. I don't know what it is. Uh, MariaDB, never heard of that. Cloudflare, no, it doesn't ring a bell. This, because this has been recorded, would you mind just shutting the door? Because Laura's got a, a rather large. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> So, are you back with me? All right, still short. Are you back with me? Yep. Right. So, Apache is actually a piece of software that is a web server, essentially. So, it'll um, allow a web browser to communicate and for it to serve files that a web browser can then understand as a web page. Um, MariaDB, MySQL are types of backend databases. So the way most websites work, including WordPress, is yes, there'll be static files that the Apache serves, but everything will then get like clawed from the database, like what pages should look like, uh, what forms, where the data from email capture forms go to, and all that sort of good stuff. So every setting, every time you change a setting, on some sort of web interface is getting written to a database. Mm -hmm. MariaDB and MySQL are backend databases that allow for websites to function. What about Cloudflare? Now, Cloudflare are massive, absolutely huge. Um, they t they're, they're, uh, they are a cloud service, but um, mm -hmm. we'll talk about what that means later on. But one of the key features uh, that I'm referring to is a DNS, domain name service. I'll talk about that later. So, summarize hardware. It's got to be physical, uh, your physical computer or server. Now, mm -hmm. you, you need to be familiar with the difference between a client and a server. Okay. Uh, could, do you think you could explain what a client might be? Uh, okay, so you already put bullet points down as the phones, IoT devices, and tablets and computers. So, I'm guessing the client devices you're referring to the company owned devices that connect to the server. Well, yeah, it doesn't just have to be company. If a device is wanting a feature, that tends to be a client. So if you're on your web browser, you're on Internet Explorer or mm -hmm. Chrome or whatever, and you're wanting to access a web page, your computer that's hosting Chrome is the client, and the server is usually Apache and various others that are then serving that content to your client. So anything that we're trying to retrieve a service is the client, essentially. Right, okay, I understand. So, <laughs> what is the internet? <laughs> uh, hmm. There's no way in hell I could explain what the internet is in a first lesson. And often this is a topic on lots of degree subjects, so I'll just try and um, summarize it. But before you can know what the internet is, you need to have a good understanding of what a network is. Um, so let's have a look at some network hardware then. So physical network hardware, the network cable. It, uh, do you know of any names, any acronyms to do with network cables? Um, I can't remember the acronym, but I know you're referring to uh what's the one that loses light um fiber you can use a fiber cable if you want yeah. connection you can use copper um uh, ethernet ethernet is typically the one you use um, okay that's interesting so the most common is twisted pair so this is um yeah that that's the majority of the network cabling that you'll find yeah. because it's Sorry. copper it is bound by the laws of physics so it can only go so far before yep. the electricity and the resistance of that electricity reduces and then the signal have, gets weak. Isn't that why they have different categories for Ethernet cables? Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
yes. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll talk about those categories a bit later if you want. Um, mm-hmm. A Nick, another acronym, Network Interface Card. So the most common one that you'll be familiar with is something that provides an Ethernet port. Yeah. Um, it, they started off with like 10 meg, 100 meg, yeah. gigabit. Um, mm-hmm. 10 gig is server standard now, starting yeah. to get come down in the consumer range, but um, mm-hmm. it allows for a much faster concurrent. These here, these yeah, are called well, S, yeah. that's SFP, SFP connection. What's that um, sound for? I'm not sure. That's a research thing for you. Yeah. But <laughs> SFP allows you to plug um, modules into it for it to either be a fiber channel to connect to the fiber optic cables, or you can put like an Ethernet uh, RJ45 port in instead. These tend to be server grade only or enterprise grade, um, and they're usually high speed. Um, benefit of fiber is you can go way above 300 meters that you can yeah. copper. Um, and it it has usually some sort of bus. Yeah. PCI- what's, what's this? It's a PCIe connector. Is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no that's I PCI. Mean, it... Okay. <laughs> PCIe Express is just the latest, well, the current revision. I think it changed in 2004 from PCI to PCI Express. It's just higher bandwidth, much faster. Um but yeah that directly connects onto the motherboard of servers Mm -hmm. and pcs to allow for additional uh, communication right rj45 then jargon that's physically the crimped network plug that clicks into the ethernet port that's an rj45 plug right there's your cable standards Mm -hmm. so cat 5e can cope with up to one gig if it's lucky um Category six contains some more shielding and the, the actual cores of the cable are separated out by a piece of plastic. Um, you can actually support 10 gig Ethernet, 10 gigabits per second on Cat6. Now, Cat7 but, is, is just the better version of it's better. But the range is limited depending on which one you use, right? Yeah, Cat6, you'll struggle to get more than 100 meters, 10 gig. But Cat7, you'll go further... Um, but it depends because it's copper. It also gets electrical interference and, and um, mm-hmm. what's called cross talk, where one electrical signal can electromagnetically cause another pulse of electricity to change. So that's that's where you can start to get errors if it's too long a distance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, covered that. Yeah covered that too and that about domain name domain names are um well to have a domain name you have to have an agreement and you have a a, a server called a dns server um a domain name server and what a domain name server is is it converts physical names of websites so google.com or whatever Mm -hmm into an IP address and all of these right. are shared around the world. So everybody knows, Hey, do you know what google.com is? And the DNS will go, um, no, nope, but I know somebody that will knock, knock, knock phone up another DNS. Hey, do you mm. know what Google is? Nope. But I think I know somebody that will knock, knock, knock. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know where Google is. It's this address here. Go here, pass it down the line. And that's, that's, yeah, that's, so a domain name is the actual website URL, universal resource locator. So google.com is a domain name or brooksandco.co.uk is a domain name. Mm-hmm. Network hub. Any ideas what this is? It's literally what you plug all the Ethernet cables into. And what does and it do? It, does, it just routes the information. Does it? As more. Yeah, it doesn't actually. Um, it doesn't route anything. Um, network hubs are so dumb, it's unreal. What this will do, right, is if this port receives a signal here, yeah, it will clone that signal 
to every port. What? Yes. So it'll take a signal here, and it will send it to every port. Whether it wants it or not, it's getting it. Yeah, that is pretty tough. <laughs> yeah, and if that if that packet that this device wanted to send actually did want to go to 24, 24 mm -hmm. would go, oh, thank you very much. Whereas the other ones have got to wait for their turn. Right, okay. So, really dumb. What's this then? Uh, then that must be what I was first explaining. <laughs> That's the only best thing I can get. It, isn't, it, it, must, it must switch it to the right Ethernet. Yeah. Oh, actually, this so inside thing. of, um, I have got, let me just skip. No, I'll talk about it later. But inside of this device, it's mm -hmm. it's got a database. It's got a table, an ARP table. And it knows um, what device is plugged into what. And it also knows what IP address it's been given. So it knows then, hey, I've got a packet I want to send it to the CCTV camera, please. And it will go, oh, yeah, I know where CCTV is. It's on port 28. I'll put you over there. And it will transmit that packet internally to 28 only, and off it goes. So it keeps everybody else free from doing stuff that they want to do. Okay, then what? why would you need? Why would you want to use a network hub? Why would you just not use a network switch? Well, you do nowadays, to be honest. But uh, it's important to know the difference because because um, if ever you come across a hub and you realize mm -hmm. that you're trying to upload a file that's taking absolutely forever and you realize that there's a lot of things plugged into a hub, that would be your bottleneck. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Or, or if you're getting files that you're uploading a load of pictures or whatever and it's just stopping halfway through because it's disconnecting or whatever, then yeah. What's the router then? Um, it's a way of transfer, transferring data wirelessly. That's an access point, and that's why I've crossed it out. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me! <laughs> uh, I could do like um, I could do uh, the QI where a klaxon goes off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh... Uh, now, what people have in their house mm -hmm. is actually multiple services, usually, because. Our internet service providers know if you give um, the average Joe all the individual piece of hardware, they won't know how to plug it all in. It'll all get lost. The dog yeah. will chew a cable and it will be down to their tech support to fix it. So these days, they'll give you one crappy little box that will try and do everything really badly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So a router. Well, before I can explain what a router does, um, so there's a switch. There's four different devices on the switch. Mm -hmm. so if that computer wants to talk to that one um, yeah the packet will go through to that port the switch will know where it's going and pass it through right. now let's say you've got another switch and that computer wants to talk to that one well that switch doesn't know how to get over here it just doesn't know and that's where a router comes in so if you shove a router in the middle what this switch will do is say, computer one wants to speak with computer seven. Mm -hmm. Do you know where computer seven is? And the switch will be like, not a clue, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the router knows where to go. So it will go to the router. The router will then go, yeah, no problem. This switch knows where it is. So it will hop to that switch and then go to the, rep, rep, the, the right client. So the router acts like a middleman and connect can connect the switches together. Okay. So inside your little box of tricks that you got from BT, you've got quite a few different little internal network devices that are all connected via the router. You've got your wireless access point chip. You've got your switch. You've got your modem. Aha. What's this do? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the modem actually does. It's, okay. it's, it's talked about so many times, but and all I can think of is the, the tone dial. Well, that's that's um, an old school um, dial-up modem. And this is an example of one in the late 80s, early 90s, actually. Um, and it literally, 
that plug here, that's your yeah. Ethernet. That's fine. We kind of get that. That mm -hmm. is a phone line. A phone yeah. line only has one, two, two cores. But the benefit two cores. Like two cables. Okay. Literally just two tiny thin strips of copper. Whereas your Ethernet has got eight. So what this will do is it will allow your to use the phone line to connect to other servers in data centers or in our case it would go to your local exchange your phone exchange so this phone line in boston or wherever you are mm -hmm. your phone line will go to a central uh, building and inside of that building will be a load of servers for internet connections and those servers will then be connected via their phone lines to other servers and it's literally one massive web a network of big servers connected to each other so that allows for a wide area network wan okay yeah just what i said <laughs> so yeah an internet service provider will have a box in the exchange that will then allow it to connect to its other boxes <laughs> essentially like that the dotted right, line right. signifying the cable that goes under yeah, the ground yeah. to the exchange Ooh. right let's talk about packets so the way that networks work is it will encapsulate a load of information into a packet, a bit like the parcel that you, you send to the post office. And in this parcel contains certain information to allow it to go to various different places or want it for loads of different purposes. Now, we separate the network into layers. I'm not sure what OSI means. Some, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's this model anyway. So. The very first layer, layer one, is the physical equipment. I know Wi-Fi, you can't see it, but there is a physical access point there somewhere, so that counts. If then above that, every device that you use, every network device, will have something called a MAC address. Have you seen one of those? Uh, no, I've heard the name. I've never looked into it. Why? It's usually... Um, two numbers colon two numbers colon two numbers colon and it's it's physical it's like it's dna for that mm -hmm. device whether you've got a playstation a network interface card in the playstation have a mac address so what the switch does is in that table that arp table that i mentioned it stores the mac address of that playstation and the router or whatever the dns server would have given it um an IP address. You've got then some other stuff, which we'll talk about a lot later, but basically we're just focusing on those little bits um, to start off with. Okay. Right. So yeah, why, why am I bothering to take you through first part of an IT degree or whatever? Because when you're sending data across the internet, you kind of got to have an understanding of where it all goes and how it all works. Um, because when it goes wrong, it'll be you that fixes it probably. Um, and often it's a process of elimination. So if you know what function certain things do, you can then eliminate it as part of your troubleshooting process until you finally get to the root cause of your problem, which is probably a missing colon in a piece of script or something. So, now we add a few other things to the mix. That works. Yeah. Because the problem is, on that... <laughs> My goodness, it's loud in there. You so, saw them. Yeah. So you assume that you've got this computer here. The router and the modem will just facilitate its request, and it will transmit it, and then it will get through to the other person. Yeah, it's done its job. But if that device is malicious and wanting to get your Bitcoin wallet address or whatever... Mm -hmm. then what the firewall does it, it inspects the packets for you and it goes yeah you've come from amazon i'll let you through 
yeah, I'm expecting an Amazon delivery. Uh, I'll let this packet go through. Um, mm -hmm. I've I've got a package here from India. Um, are you aware of this? Nope. Well, you ain't getting in this letterbox because you could be all sorts. That that's a firewall. <laughs> okay. It's a gatekeeper. Yeah. Now, the, your internet connection um, is separated into ports. So your internet service provider will give your modem an IP address for it to use. Yeah. And if, if Google wants to get hold of your computer and give it a web page to look at, mm -hmm. then all Google has is the IP address of the person that originally made the request. But what, that, what we do is we separate that IP address into loads of different ports for different reasons. So all, the, all you've got to do is talk back on the same port and it knows what it was for. So like port 80, for example, is web traffic. Port 21 is file transfer protocol. Port 36, um, oh, I can't remember it now, but remote desktop, another port. Or, you know, they all have a port for a different reason. So, yeah, we've talked about this. So client versus a server. Well, um, what makes it a client or a server? It's all software-driven, to be perfectly honest. It depends what's been installed on it and what role it's been granted. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, if it's accessing a service, it's a client. If it's following a structure and completing a task, responding to something or actually doing something of some kind, then, yeah, that's a server's job. Right, networking services. Now, a DHCP it is a, a piece of software, on, sometimes, well, it's largely on your actual router that will give it an IP address. So you'll have a device, you'll plug it in. Say you plug your PlayStation in. I'm sure you don't play a PlayStation because you're, you're far better than that. But if you did, yeah. um, your PlayStation would go, hey, I'm a PlayStation, is there a DHCP here? And the router will go, yeah, here I am. And the PlayStation should go, can I have an address, please? And DHCP will go, yeah. Well, all right, here's an example then. <laughs> yeah, so it'll, you plug it in and it will do a handshake. It's literally called a handshake. They go, hi, right. this is me. I'm a phone. DHCP goes, yeah, I'm a DHCP. And they go, hey, can I have, can I have an IP address? And it go, yeah, sure. Can I just take your MAC address so I can remember who you are again, please? So the phone will then send it its MAC address for a packet. And then it'll go, yeah, okay, I'm a SIP phone. This is my MAC address. And then it'll go, yeah, fine, I've got it. This is, I'm going to give you this IP address, and I'm going to add your MAC address to this table so I know where to find you again in the future. That's what a DHCP does. <laughs> right, okay. Does that make sense? Yep, I'm definitely going to look at this later, though. <laughs> now, domain name service, it's it converts those domain names into IP addresses because, yes, you can arrive at websites by just typing in the numbers of the IP address, but nobody in their right mind would ever remember no. that. Never. So, um, yeah, th that's kind of how it all works. So um, you'll go, hey, DNS. Do you know hot? Hot is a hot Google is. <laughs> yeah, it's really hot. Do you know how to get to Google? And that router will go, um, no, but he might. And he'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, there I am. Uh, oh, no. And it kind of flows until it gets there. And you can actually see this by doing a trace route um, function. Let me just show you it. So in the command line, if you do trace route followed by, I don't know, then what you'll see happen is it's going out and it'll go, oh, yeah, right, that's my router. That's my IP address of my router. My router's going, mm, no, don't know where you are. Oh, there's my internet connection. Um, my internet service provider's like, um, I, I, I don't really know. Um, 
obviously it happens in fractions of a second. Mm-hmm. And then my internet connection is like, no, nah, I don't know where this guy is now. Oh, but this this guy might know. Well, let me try him. <laughs> um, come on, Amazon can't be that far away. No, I don't know where Amazon is. <laughs> let me try uh, this place in Milton Keynes now. Oh, 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 London. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've gone to a London IP address now. Oh, do you know where Amazon is? Um, um, it could be over here. Um, nope. <laughs> What about over here? Oh, I think we found the data center. Yeah, it might be over here now. Uh, nope. It's close, though, because I can tell because they're all, like the similar sort of IP address range now of these internet connections. So it's kind of in the right building. <laughs> Still looking. Oh, no, no. I, I didn't get a response. All right, I'll try somebody else then. Why the hell is this going so slow? Uh, I'd say a fraction of a second, right? Well, yeah, but it's still that slow. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's, it's struggling. Well, it takes a while because it's going back and forth so many times to try and update our screen for us. That's what it's doing. Right, Let's okay. see if we can find it. Let's see if we can find some packets of what's happening. These are all the packets flying through my network connection. My God, that's what. It's my computer. That's that's probably Zoom, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it is, because I can tell by the traffic. You've got UDP which is basically a way of transmitting a package where it doesn't really care if it gets it or not, but it's really fast. So that's ideal for video stuff, video um, yeah, broadcast. Mm-hmm. Whereas TCP, it actually handshakes and it says, hey, did you get this packet? And it goes, yeah, I got the packet. Send me the next. And it go, yeah, I got the next packet. Oh, yeah, I've got it. Send me the next. So that takes longer than that just UDP, sense. which spits it out in any or- in, in in order. And if it don't mm-hmm. get it or not, tough. <laughs> That's encrypted traffic, so that'll be TLS encrypted. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, that's that's the that that ARP table that I mentioned, and my Ubiquiti wireless switch has gone. Hey, do you know who's got this address? And my route has gone. Yeah. Here he is. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> oh, what are these? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't look like we're going to get to be able to resolve to... Uh... Yeah. That trace route for a while, but yeah, that's how trace route works. So if you've got any problems connecting through, um, yeah, you can just find out where it's getting stuck and then investigate what that is. Okay. So yeah, trace route. It shows you the hops. Ping. Do you know what ping in is? Um, probably not the correct definition of it. No. Give it a go. Okay, as far as I'm aware, pinging is literally as it sounds. You hit up something else. You are sending off a signal to get a response. Exactly. Perfect. Spot on. Just like a submarine would to find out if something's there or not. Yeah. So you ping the the domain. The domain will reply with the IP address, and then it will try and get a reply, and it does. So you know then it's connected properly. So a frame, a frame of um, data in a network. So right at the start of the frame, because all all you'll ever see is just a load of ones and zeros like that. But the actual frame, the first chunk of it will say, right, this is a receiver's MAC address. That's a sender's MAC address. Fine. So then your switch will know based on this to send it to the right person. 
then it's got the IP address, so the switch will know that and the router will know that. And then actually inside of the um, next bit of the packet is the actual data to do with the web page or the picture file or whatever it is. So all of this is called a network frame. And that's what I showed you in Wireshark just then. In here, if I double click on this, this is what it looks like, that frame. This mumbo jumbo here. And it yep. knows, right, frame here. That's the I that's the in the MAC addresses of whom it wanted to go to and where it came from. So that means my my switch can do its job. And then that knows, hey, this is an internet protocol version now. Look, here we go. Here's the IP addresses. Source port, fire destination 8801. That's definitely Zoom. That's a video thing. And then boom, mm -hmm. there's there's 480 bytes of, of of my awesome face and my spot, my perfectly dulcet tones of voice coming through microphone. <laughs> and then it will carry on. And that is pretty much all I'm going to go over, actually, for now. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? <laughs> uh, no, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have to go over it all over again, just so I can remember it all, to figure out how it all works. Yeah. Um. There are there, on this month's worth of training. There is um a few activities that you'll need to do to demonstrate that you understand those concepts. Um. Mm -hmm. Wireshark free. Actually, have a look and see what's going on. It, it's pretty cool, especially if you then go on YouTube or whatever and you start seeing all the YouTube traffic coming in. Um, it's it's pretty useful to remember that um, every frame of every packet of data contains certain information that allows it to get to its destination. That's quite useful. It allows you to interpret any problems. Um, so if you remember, you remember looking at that Wireshark um, information TCP is for things like phone call. Uh, sorry, UDP is for like phone calls, stuff that you have to have there and then really quick. TCP yeah. is if it's more secure, uh, not secure. Sorry, more. You want to make sure they get it correctly. So if you send in a, a, a video file or you're sending a file via FTP to a system, then mm -hmm. you want to make sure they've got the correct file because if it's wrong, it gets corrupted. So that yeah. will that will use TCP for that. Right. Okay. And then the port, all of your connections will be divided into tons of little ports so that your applications, so Chrome, Putty, whatever you're using, mm -hmm. it knows where to what program it wants to send it to. So it's all like signposts and everything. And that's kind of how the internet works. It's just everything. <laughs> <laughs> the internet is everything connected together. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, unit one of a computer science degree. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's just purely because in the actual um, assessment criteria for the principles of coding qual, you have got to be able to describe how hardware and software components make the web work. Right. <laughs> and you'll be examined on it. Lovely. Okay. Sure. Yeah, and it, if you think about it, switches, yeah, pretty straightforward. Router, mm -hmm. yeah, it just routes to other stuff. The software, well, yeah, you've got you've got Apache, you've got um, operating systems, you've got all sorts of, um, yeah. And we've even delved into 2.2 a bit as well. Okay. They have other purposes of product ports, use of the web communications. All right, so is over this month, am I going to learn everything on that list, or? I don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> Depends. Probably not, um, because there are certain things that you need to grasp before you can do these. There's no point looking at tools uh, for publishing content unless you know how to install the tools or even what those tools are in the first place. <laughs> yeah. And then... Um, 
we're going to probably do file types and stuff like that later because um, that's pretty straightforward looking at how stuff's compressed and things like that. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep.